Our next guest is doing exactly that and has done that for a long part of her working life, alhamdulillah. Sarah Javad, who's bringing her, the community together through her charity, Cycle Sisters. Let's get Aslam Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Welcome, welcome. Look, I mean, you must have enjoyed that little part about medicinal plants and stuff like that because you really have been, over the years, connected with nature, with MADE and various other little projects you've been involved with. Yeah, that's right. It's always been something that I've been really passionate about is... Um, encouraging other Muslims to understand what our faith teaches us about the environment and taking care of the environment. Um, and cycling is something, it's a way that we can um, reduce our emissions and um, it's a cheap and convenient form of transport, um, which is a lot of fun as well. So it's something that I've been promoting uh, I mean, since I started. Uh, has it grown out of, the, uh, out of COVID because of the lockdown? Is that where the idea came up from? No, we've been running for a while. Uh, started four years ago with our first group in Walthamstow. And uh, the idea really uh, came out of I wanted to create a comfortable and safe space for Muslim women to try cycling and to develop their cycling skills. Because um, I had recently come back into cycling after a long break since childhood and found it actually quite an exclusive and intimidating space. Um, so I felt that there was a need for a group that would cater for the needs of Muslim women and help Muslim women to overcome any barriers that, that, that they experience to cycling. Um, so the demand right from the beginning has been massive. It's been amazing to see the interest um, from the sisters all around the place. Um, and then during the lockdown, uh, it, that just grew. We, we had even more requests um, from sisters wanting us to come and set up new groups in their areas and, and getting some support for cycling as well. I'm look, trying to buy a bike in the lockdown was literally impossible. I mean, no, not only prices had gone up, but trying to get them was really difficult. Yeah, they were totally, totally out of stock everywhere. It's been a real challenge for people, actually, and a shame because a lot of people want to be able to get started with cycling and they haven't been able to. Um, but I think things are starting to improve now, um, so it's worth keep keep trying and going to your local bike shop and see if you can pick something up. When you spoke about intimidating environment, safe environment, what are we talking about? What kind of places? Yeah, so it's both um, intimidating in the sense of having concerns around safety and feeling vulnerable, um, particularly as a Muslim woman on a bike. Um, but it's also uh, the kind of image that gets portrayed of your typical cyclist. Um, you know, if, if that's, it tends to be like the white middle-aged man wearing lycra. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's not something that you identify with, then it's very hard to see cycling as being something for you. Um, you know, it's, you, you see it as something where you need to have a lot of expensive equipment, you have to wear specialist clothing. Um, and really what we're trying to do is make cycling much more accessible and show that you can, like everyone can cycle, um, sisters can cycle wearing whatever they want. There's no kind of restrictions. Um, it's just an everyday activity um, that's, that's a lot of fun. I mean, we want everyone to be able to have a chance to, to give it a go. I mean, I, you know, I used to cycle, as you can tell. <laughs> God, I did about four or five years, I think, in, in total. And I have cycled from Glasgow to London as well. So, you know, a bit, a bit, especially in London, I spent four years on the bike. And you talk about intimidating spaces. I mean, even the cycle paths are quite difficult because, OK, they have been created, but you've got to watch out for people getting off the bus and, and walking out in front of you. How do you try and, you know, train the cyclists to be fully aware of what's happening around them? Yeah, well, it, it's really important um, to know what you're doing, to know what where you should be positioning yourself on the roads and things like that. So um, I'm also a cycling instructor, so I offer free cycle training for um, all levels. So even if you're an experienced cyclist, you can also benefit from cycle training. Um, most local councils offer it for free for their residents. Um, so I would really recommend anyone out there who's thinking about starting cycling, not sure whether they can do it. Um, even if you're a complete beginner, you've never learned to pedal, um, never had an opportunity as a child, you can also learn that through the lessons as well. Um, and you just slowly build up your confidence. It does take time. Um, start off with small journeys, just in your local area, um, and then you can just build it up from there, inshallah. Now, I didn't know that your local council can give you some of the, some of the support as well. Yeah, it's it's actually um, it's, it's a really good initiative to kind of try and encourage people to cycle. Um, and what we've done is trained up uh, women from within the Muslim community as instructors as well, because we know Brilliant. a lot of women would like to do lessons um, with someone that they feel comfortable with. Um, so you, you can, I mean, even if there's no Muslim instructors available, you can request a female instructor if that's what you would prefer. Um, so, yeah, so that opportunity is out there. Start to look like Amsterdam one day, bit of Holland, bikes everywhere. 
that's the dream yeah <laughs> we'd love to see that here um, I mean if you come to our area in Walton Forest um, where I'm based it is actually called a mini Holland because they had a lot of um, investment in the infrastructure sure. um, and sure. there's so many sisters cycling well, here now well, we're yeah. going to see you guys in action just now I think there's some footage on screen coming up uh, there we go there we can see you there um, so it's pretty leisurely looking from what I can see yeah, we're very relaxed I mean, about our ride. I mean, it's, it's through the, the paths in the, in, the, in the park. Alhamdulillah, it looks pretty straightforward. Yes, we do. We do both the nice scenic rides through the parks, um, but also we do on-road rides as well, because that's important to help build people's confidence to be able to mm. cycle independently. And, and how long does a session last for normally, if you're out, if you're out taking a group? So our rides are a couple of hours. Um, a nice leisurely pace, um, we don't go in a rush um, and then we usually have time to stop at a cafe as well, that's also um, been an important part of our groups, um, so it's somewhat restricted at the moment with the, with uh, COVID, sure. um, but the, the kind of social side of the rides is really important um, for a lot of a lot of women um, have, uh, you know, it's kind of something that they look forward to in the week. Um, people can feel quite isolated, so it's a chance to get together, meet new friends. Um, and, and that's uh, something that we also um, really want to do at Cycle Sisters. Uh, what about, what kind of essential equipment do I need to get going? So really all you need is a bike, um, and it is as simple as that. Um, but there's so many different bad. types of bikes. Yeah, and that's one of, you know, it can be really overwhelming. Um, so just a, a basic hybrid bike is fine for most types of riding. Um, if you go into your local bike shop, they'll be really helpful. You can let them know what kind of thing you're going to be doing. But for most people, a hybrid bike will be perfect. Um, and you don't, you know, you'll be able to, if, if you ask around friends and family, you'll probably find lots of people have got a bike sitting around in the shed. So it may be that you can get one back in action, um, take it for a quick service rather than having to necessarily buy a bike. Um, but yeah, it's, Bikes don't cost, uh, you, can, you can pick up a second-hand bike um, or um, a fairly cheap bike. So let's just clarify, a hybrid is a straight bars? Yeah, so a hybrid um, is basically a bike that is suitable for most types of riding and, and different sorts of terrain. Um, so you get the road bikes, which are the ones with the very thin tyres um, for uh, when you want to go really fast on the roads. Um, and you get mountain bikes, which are more suitable for off-road. Yeah. Um, so hybrid is kind of like an all-rounder. And what else do I need beyond the bike? What about a helmet? What about all those kind of things? Yeah, so a helmet, if you want to wear one, um, it, you can uh, buy them online, you can buy them in a bike shop. Um, but other than that, there really isn't anything else. Um, there's no, no kind of specialist clothing needed um, to wear. You can wear whatever you want to cycle. Um, if there are sisters out there who've got questions about how to cycle wearing um, abayas and hijabs and things like that, um, there's a blog on our website, um, cyclesisters.org.uk. Um, with lots of different tips from sisters about how to adapt your clothing to be able to cycle safely. And how often does the group go out in a week? Uh, so in Walton Forest, we've got rides uh, twice a week at the moment. Um, we've also got a group in Redbridge with a weekly ride. And so we've got new groups uh, that we're working on setting up at the moment in some of the other London boroughs as well. And what about punches? What happens then? Well, we fix them. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've, we've got a team of ride leaders um, who are all sisters um, who have come up with the group and developed their skills. Um, they've all done bike maintenance training uh, and they know how to fix a puncture. So uh, we're pretty good at it now. We can do it pretty quickly. Brilliant. And are you looking at something a bit more intense? Glasgow to London, for example? Uh, so, yeah, the, the plan is to expand Cycle Sisters into a nationwide uh, network of groups. Um, so once we've um, developed our groups in London, then we're going to be looking at uh, setting up groups outside of London as well, because we know the demand is there. We get asked all the time from sisters. Fantastic. Uh, and, and are there any age limits? Is there an age that you'll take some of the sisters? Uh, no, no age limits at all. Um, so you're never too old to cycle, um, never too old to learn to cycle as well. Um, I'm actually at the moment teaching my 60-something-year-old mother-in-law how to cycle. She never had the opportunity to do it wow. before. Um, so no, everybody, <clears throat> everyone should feel that cycling is something for them and that they, they can really try it. Fantastic. And, and what about, I mean, people fall off and stuff like that. What about first aid? Do you, get, you guys always have somebody with you? Yeah, so we're, we've got first aid uh, trained ride leaders as well. Um, we carry a first aid pack. 
uh, in case there's any incidences on our ride. Um, but handfully, lad, those have been few and far between so far. Fantastic. And uh, when the group goes out, what kind of numbers are you talking about? I mean, it seemed like quite a large group. Uh, so our rides are always fully booked. Um, we normally end up with waiting lists. Um, so we, we typically take out groups of like 15 to 20. Uh, but obviously at the moment with the COVID restrictions, then we can only uh, have groups of six. So um, we're in some of our groups, we're having multiple groups that are going out on one day, okay. uh, going out from okay. different start points. I mean, look, weather's oh, phenomenal at the moment. What happens in the winter? Is, uh, will you be taking a break? Are you still looking at certain days or...? Uh, are people recommended to bring waterproofs? What happens? Yes, yeah, so nothing stops us at Cycle Sisters. We have very rarely cancelled our rides. Uh, we ride through all weathers, um, even if it's pouring with rain. Uh, we've also ridden in the snow before as well. Um, so just having some basic um, basic things like waterproof jacket, um, mm. warm socks and things like that really does make a big difference. Um, uh, it means that you can cycle all year round. What would be your top three or five tips for anybody who wanted to get involved? Uh, so anyone who's thinking about starting cycling, um, I would say first of all is look into the free cycle lessons because um, that really uh, will make a difference and give you the confidence to get going. Um, and then try and find um, some people to cycle with to give you a bit of moral support. So if there's no group in your area, then just finding a couple of friends uh, to go out with uh, just makes it feel a lot more easier and, and mm. less intimidating. Um, and then it's just starting small and not kind of pushing yourself at the start. Um, there's no shame in getting off and walking. You know, if you get to a hill and you can't quite make it up, just yeah. just get off and jump onto the pavement, walk up the rest of it. Um, you know, very soon, if you keep practicing, you'll find that you're able to do longer and longer rides. Brilliant. And look, if anybody wants to get involved, how should they approach you in the project? Uh, so you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. If you search for Cycle Sisters, uh, you can also sign up to our mailing list through our website, cyclesisters.org.uk, uh, and we'll be keeping people updated about new groups uh, that will be getting up and running. And if there's any sisters out there who are confident cyclists and looking to volunteer for our groups, um, then also contact us through the website and we'll let you know how you can get involved, inshallah. Have you got anybody... Near professional, semi-professional, is anybody kind of, you know, uh, uh, somebody taking it up and, you know, looking to go in, into a bit more detail? Uh, so we do, <clears throat> we do have some sisters who do longer distance rides. Um, actually, uh, quite a few of us at the moment are in training for doing a charity fundraiser. Um, so it's going to be a 40 mile ride from London to South End happening Fantastic. in a couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really good to see the sisters Brilliant. pushing themselves and... and well, listen, good challenges. luck with that, and if on the streets, and uh, may Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. Fantastic work. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Salam Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Pleasure. Asalaamu Alaikum. Right, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Sarah Javed, there was Cycle Sisters, alhamdulillah, a fantastic project. You can go online to register. Any sisters who want to know a bit more about cycling, and especially taking, weather of the taking advantage of the fantastic weather right now. Now, sadly, we're at the end of our show, alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you to our guests, of course, being for being with us. And, of course, for you watching Living the Life. We're back same time tomorrow evening. Until then, for myself, have a very pleasant evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Living the Life.